Okay, Don, we are recording. What are we going to talk about tonight? Okay. Uh, everybody uh, knows I have another location, so I'm basically, I'm broadcasting from my camper in beautiful downtown Crawfordville, the suburb of Sharon, Georgia. <laughs> Big town, small population. So uh, there's people that's asking what we do here and everything. This is uh, like two or three steps up what I do at my house. Here, I would like you to be kind of proficient, be a beekeeper for a while, because when you come to my house, you're going to work at one speed. Here, we're working four or five times faster. Uh, I'm doing probably five or six inspections uh, within a minute and a half. <clears throat> so to give you an update on what we've done, we bought this property to, as our southern location. It's six acres. We put 90 packages in first of March. And the queens never got out until the 6th, 5th or 6th, I would say. And today, we got about 192 boxes of bees. Some are 8s, some are 5s. So that tells you you can split them. Now, what I'm telling you on top of that is we sell 25 or 35 nukes every single weekend. This weekend, we had quite a few people come here, witness what we do, and haul bees back. So... If you in a location you need people to bring you bees, check my webpage. They are students all over. And if you want to be a student, you can contact me about being a student. Uh, the biggest thing we're running into is people don't want to split, or they're afraid to split, or they're trying to make walkaway splits and losing too much time. So you can see how we split. Now. There's things that I tell you, you won't believe. So really, I'm not going to care if you don't believe. So just take it as I'm blowing smoke. I took one year, I took one package and kept a record. I split it 41 times. So I've split this stuff here. On one high we had today, it was a five-frame nuke, wall-to-wall, -wall, and it was put in past uh, the 5th of uh, March. I made five splits off of that. But what I'm telling you is we have queen cells or we're cutting cells. We've done both of them today. We had one student here, which is, he's been here last year, not here last year, but he was one of my students from last year. He can spot queens fast. So I let him run two or three rows. And he was flipping the lids over, and we give him three to five seconds to make a decision. We queen right or queenless. So when he goes down the row, he's flipping lids, which makes noise. As soon as you open the lid up, if there's no queen, then they're noisy. So we pulled out a uh, coffee cup full of grafted cells, which they will hatch out within 24 to 36 hours. So he went down that whole row in five minutes, flipping lids, and it was 50, 57 or 58 in that first row. And we went back putting dropping cells in. I showed him how to do it. He done that whole row dropping cells in in a minute and a half. So if you're going through your hive, lollygagging, walking this through and looking that, you're just wasting time if you want to make money at this. You need to get in the first five to ten seconds. Make a decision. Do you need a queen or you don't need a queen? If it's quiet and there's packing bees, split it. I split five frame highs. In fact, Greg is driving down the road. He watched me doing some. I showed him a trick today, putting the bees down the drain, where you could go to a hive if you had a queen cell. Or say you had a frame and had 10 queen cells on there, and you missed it, and they started hatching. We don't waste the time looking for the queen. We go over and put a frame of honey in, in four frames. We put the lid on the right way and put another lid on top, an eight-frame lid, and we line the holes up, and we shake most of the bees into it. So basically what you got is you made a split in less than a minute. The queen's going to be one place or the other. And if the queens are hatching, shaking them bees with queen cells on is not going to hurt them because they've already hatched out, and the ones that didn't hatch out, you're not going to damage them. A lot of people think that queen cells are so delicate. I learned the hard way in South Georgia, I had an old pickup truck, and I had a um, Cool Whip container, which is about a pound and a half container. And I had paper towels in it with about 50 to 75 queen cells that I grafted was going to go to one of my out yards. 
Some idiot pulled out in front of me and I jammed my brakes on and I didn't think quick enough and the whole thing hit the floor. First thought was, they ain't none of them gonna hatch. I had better than three quarters hatch. So don't think that you can't shake a, a ripe queen cell that's ready to hatch, say within 24 hours. Uh, if you wanna make bees, don't do walkaways. That's backyard thinking. If you do a walkaway, even if you did everything right, you've got a minimum of 16 days at the very earliest, 14 days before you have a queen. There's two weeks wasted. Now, if you got bad weather, add another four to six days on that. Most of that month is gone. So if she flies out and she don't come back, now you've got into six weeks, seven weeks, and you don't have no results. Much better to have a cell that's right, put it in. You're going to know within a day to two days. So that is the, uh, the outlook on commercial versus your backyard beekeeping. If you want to make numbers and you could put your package in a five frame box, they're going to explode and you're going to have wall to wall really fast. If you put them in eight or 10, it's going to take a lot longer to get them to draw. So if you want to build numbers this time of the year, right now, north and south, we're in a good honey flow. So you don't even have to feed. We're filling one gallon buckets half full and we done that a week ago and they still got quite a bit in there. And we're getting honey bound right now in, in five frame nukes, deeps and mediums. And I'll talk about mediums and deeps because I had a student say, why are you even running mediums? And I said, was you in the service? Yeah, I was in the service. I said, is your friends all come back in good shape? Well, you know, some might be amputees and that. I said, a week ago we had a guy here uh, and he had a wheelchair and actually went in the back with his wheelchair and is interested in bees. We teach people that are in that condition. They can't walk. They can't lift a big hive. So they sell, we sell mediums to them. It's a lighter box. They put a, an apron on, a vinyl apron. They can pick that box up and they can take their, their mobility cart from one place to another. If you stick with all deeps because you say, I'm going to sell bees and only deeps, you are limiting yourself to 50% of the sales. So that's one thing to think about. we got more women coming in, want beekeeping. They can't lift these monstrous hives up. The, the mediums are your best sell and gets the same price. Now, we put a queen cell two weeks ago into three mediums that was nothing but honey. So they started already laying in there. We made, on that one hive there, it had 15 frames. Most of it was honey, very little brood here and there. We split that up, made 10 splits off of that, and we dropped the ripe cell in there and shook a frame of bees from different hives. Just went down the row, grab a frame from here and a frame from that. Now, when I'm shaking bees to put them down the drain to build a box up, it takes me 15 seconds to open the box, grab a frame, and shake it. So... You know, if you stand there and you've got to look and look and look for that queen and you want to make money, you're wasting a lot of time. So if people out there has got this idea that you can't make money in it, talk to my students. They're coming down here. And unless they got a lot of stimulus checks, they're buying a lot of bees to resell. So that much information out there tonight, I'm going to open up for questions on anything related to bees. Not fishing tonight. Bees. <laughs> All right. First question, David and Tracy. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, Don, how are you? Hi. Okay. Good. Hey, um, just to, wanted to start with a, a compliment. About uh, two chats ago, I was having trouble getting my graphs to take, and uh, you uh, you helped me with uh, pointing out I wasn't carrying enough bees in the, in the box, and it wasn't getting – enough uh, heat and so I went from probably 15 or so cells per frame now I'm up to about 30 39 <clears throat> so it's doing pretty well thank you and I guess the question I had was <clears throat> in relation to selling nukes I've got a, a bee yard about a quarter mile away from my house mm -hmm. and I want to bring the the nukes here at my house to sell so, but I'm going to sell them in jester nukes, traveling nukes. So 
what do I need to do to move them over here in time to sell them for certain days of pickup? Well, if you're going to sell them out from your house, are you going to maintain any bees at your house? Uh, I've got a small yard below my house. Uh, and so, yeah, we do have some space there. If you want to make money, listen to what I'm going to tell you. You sell your bees from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. You're teaching the other times or you're busy. If the people cannot take them up at that time, then they need to buy them someplace else. Now, you already said you can graft. Coordinate your grafts coming off with your pickups. If they're coming on a Saturday or a Sunday, then you sell the nuke between 1 and 5. You're going to have bees in the morning out, bees in the afternoon. And if you've got a graft to sell, you remember the videos I've done, 10 to 12 uh, bees. Put them in a five-frame yeah. box, move the gesture <clears throat> box, or transfer them, and don't dump your box. Put the selling or... If you're not going to give your trade secrets away, run a bring the box that you're going to sell with a, a super on it with some honey in it. And then as soon as the customer leaves, get a frame of honey. Don't show them how you're making all this stuff. Drop a frame of honey in it. That holds your field bees. When you got time, okay. they're off the property, go in out of your grafts and drop you a grafted selling there. Now you can, once you get those sealed, you can put them in a chicken incubator. If you're on a small scale, you can do probably 200, 250. Uh, if you look cool. at some of the videos, we showed pictures inside and outside of an old refrigerator. We've converted with two light bulbs and a thermostat in there. We can run 500 to 1,000 cells. So <clears> we've got to <throat> cook out between 500 to 1,000 every three days. That's cool. So, and then <clears throat> right after the, the queen cell, caps and you just put it right into the incubator no as soon as the cap the cell is capped yeah when it's capped yes exactly okay and then you just okay. move into the incubator okay cool so oh, that's great that saves you running a starter finisher ah uh, that's a good tip <laughs> that's a good tip well that's what i'm here for to help you make money yeah, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, over to the driving, Mr. Driving. Go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, can you hear us, sir? Yeah, we yep. hear you good. Yeah, we hear you good. Okay, well, hey, we're uh, we're currently on the B run right now, uh, heading to our uh, our next drop. We've been driving all night, nonstop. Left Don's uh, last night. Just want to take a second to thank everybody who listens to the uh, B chat. There's on Don's Facebook page, uh, on all of our uh, podcast page. We met a lot of uh, really great folks today. A lot of folks are fat bee man fans, so it's, it's been fun to be able to deliver these bees to a bunch of people all over the country. We have already been through Georgia and Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, the first part of Ohio. Now we're heading over to Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and then the last leg through Ohio. And uh, just wanted to, to take a second to thank everybody who helped support us and uh, that helps us grow our bee yard and, and have those goals and dreams that we have. And also, I wanted to give a special thanks to Don and uh, Stephen and Bradley, uh, Jerry, his wife, uh, all the folks that are there at Dixie Bee Supply who are doing a heck of a job keeping that thing going. It's, uh, you know, if folks that listen to this chat and they, they see Don and everything that he teaches on Facebook, that's one thing. But when you get down there to those southern yards and you actually see it hands on, hundreds and hundreds of graphs that are going in, hundreds and hundreds of queens that are being pulled from the yards, the thousands and thousands of boxes full of bees everywhere. It's really hard to wrap your brain around, even when you have a little bit of experience. Uh, so folks that are still on the fence, if you can get down and learn from Don, learn at a speed uh, where you can start to absorb that fire hose uh, that Don throws at you, it really, uh, makes uh, a tremendous difference on your growth um, in the bee yard. So, uh, Don, there's a lot of folks that there were, I mean, we're, we've delivered the first 1 million bees already. We've got about a million bees uh, left. Uh, how, how was my fan? Was my fan? Did she like that autograph? Oh, she, she loved that. She did. Uh, so Terry, Terry Bukowski, she's, I know she's going to be listening. Uh, we were running a little bit late, getting clear back to Dalton, Georgia for our first stop, and uh, Don gave her the very first uh, special Fat B-Man autographed uh, 
three pound package, so she she loved that. So that was that was great. Thanks, Don. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of folks that are, you know, installing packages from the first time. A lot of folks are wanting to get into beekeeping, especially, you know, right now when folks are trying to uh, better understand the food system and, you know, look for a little more security with those things. A lot, there's a lot of brand new beekeepers who are just not getting into beekeeping just because of what's going on uh, in the last couple months. I know you've done, you've got a million videos on there, but <laughs> folks that are listening and all your big fans out there, if, if you could have, what, just a, a, a couple quick tips for them on getting their hive started that can really save them a lot of headache in the future. What would you say to a brand new beekeeper who just bought your bees today and they're gonna, they're gonna go install them? What, what's the biggest tips that you would have for them to help see them succeed? I would, I would watch the videos, 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 videos and see how they're put together. Find your mentor, find your mentor, help, 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 and keep, and up, the keep students, up with the students, they, 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 they can help. They can help. That's great. There's a lot of lot of students, and we're all we're all here to help. and want to see everybody uh, succeed. We've had a bunch of students uh, from Ohio, New Jersey, all over the place that were down learning too. And we're all you know we all get along, and we all want to see each other do well, and, and want to pass on business. And um, yeah, it's great. So that, that's a good tip. Find a mentor, find a student, check the videos out, and uh, just want to again just quickly say thanks. Thank you for everything you do, Don. Get an answer if you don't an answer if you don't know. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Okay, over to Robert Richardson. Go ahead, Robert. Yes, hello. Hello. We can hear Is you. Yeah, you what's hear? your question, Robert? Yes. Uh, First of all, Don, you rock. <laughs> I love the video. I love all your information. And uh, I love watching these chats. So in my second year, I'm hoping to uh, grow a lot of colonies. Uh, my stretch goal would be 50 colonies. Started last year with two nukes. Um, ended up with uh, taking three double deep 10 frame hives into the winter. So the first thing I was trying this year to grow new colonies was your early season split method. Mm -hmm. uh, one frame of honey, one frame of uh, full foundation and a queen cell. Mm -hmm. And I've grown 13 of those so far. And um, they're going pretty well. Um, but of the 13, um, two of them are absolutely succeeded. I have mated queens. Uh, which are easily observable and have been laying eggs and larva uh, are appearing in, in the uh, split. I have two splits that uh, have eggs, scattered eggs and larva, but I cannot find the queens in them. And then I had two in which the uh, queen cells did not emerge, so they just failed. But I had six where the queens emerged. I verified the queens emerged out of the cells Within a couple of days, the bees in those six splits absconded and just left. And then I have one where the queen has just emerged. So my questions are uh, focusing first on the ones that worked. Um, I've noticed that by the time I get to having a laying queen that's uh, easily observable, I'm down to very few bees, like less than a handful. <laughs> what do you recommend at that point? What are you splitting into? Are you splitting a uh, 10 frame hive and making half and half? I'm are you putting them in a five frame box? I'm splitting into two frame boxes and two frame partitions and divided five frame boxes. Mm -hmm. and, and what are you using? Grafted cells? Are you cutting cells? I'm cutting them out of my big, my three big double deep 10 frame hives. All right. And how many bees are you putting in them? I usually shake, uh, I've been shaking one frame. Okay. And the fr when you put that cell in there, are you putting brood in there too with it? No, sir. I put in one frame of honey. Okay. An empty frame of full foundation. Well, you don't need an empty frame in there. You, you've got a frame in there. If it's a two frame box, you only need one frame. Put your cell up against the inside wall because you said it's a, it's a five frame, two frames in each side, right? Yes, sir. 
Okay, so if you put the cell against the partition and you have one frame of beesing there and it's a good cell and you haven't damaged it, you need to cut at least a one inch circle around that cell so you don't flex it. If it's at the bottom, reach around the back, wet your knife down and use a real thin blade knife. Not a real wide, like a pocket knife or something. You want something thin. Reach through there and when, you, when you're sawing it or cutting it, don't push forward to cut. Push down a little bit and pull back to you. And take your thumb and your forefinger from across the back and support the frame. If that frame or that wax there in that comb flexes any and you, you cut them out too soon, you damage the queen. Okay. So if you put them on the inside wall, one frame of honey with a frame of ship bees, providing that partition goes all the way to the top, that the bees don't cross from one side to the other, I you should it. be all right. Yeah. Did you close the entrances up? Yes, but my question was, the two I know work perfectly, and I've got a laying queen. Mm -hmm. Those queens or those splits are now down to very few bees. Once you got the queen there, did you see eggs? Oh, yes. Yeah, she successfully once made it. Got, once you got eggs, did you add a frame of brood that's hatching? No, I have not. That's my, what do you recommend at that point? I would go to a hive that's really good and strong, pull a frame up, look at it and look around the center, you'll see baby bees cutting their cells coming out. Okay? Right. Take that frame there and set it in there. Okay. Now, so if you have a frame that's got bees on it and you know you got the queen in the original box, what frames has got new bees I get, you can add them in. A add emerging bees. Yep, you won't hurt. Now, I showed students an advanced technique here in the incubator, we must have missed by a few hours, and we had seven queens that hatched in the incubator. So we put them in a cage. We took them back. We went to a hive, pulled a frame of honey out, shook a frame of bees in. We didn't even check for the queen. We shook them in the box, opened up the top hole there, and let that virgin walk right on in there. Once they're from the incubator or when they hatch in your hive, You've got a good 24 hours before they build up enough pheromones on them that they'll reject them. And if you shake them just like that, you get a good reception on it. Okay. Now, in the two where I have observable eggs and larvae, they're mm -hmm. scattered. But I cannot, there's two of them like that, and I cannot find the queens in them. I've looked four or five times over the last two weeks. Why are you wanting to find the queen? Are you selling the queen? No, I just want to see that she's really in there. <laughs> Why? Well, do you, see, do you see eggs? I see eggs. It's they're scattered eggs. Um, that doesn't mean nothing. No, a doesn't. young queen will like, scatter eggs sometimes. Sometimes they put multiple eggs in there. When I add my brood to a hive like that, that the the queens come back with a frame of honey, I see eggs. If I see five eggs, I know she's back. She's laying. I take a frame from another hive with emerging bees. I put it in there. She's not going to lay any more than there's enough bees to take care of the cells or the eggs. Okay. But if your temperature is fluctuating, you're going to lose some bees. So that's right. another key factor. Right. Right. We had really bad. We had really good March weather. But yep. I was looking on April the 21st. And of uh, the 21 days in April, 10 of our nights were down in the 30s. Well, so we that's have half your problem. Sorry? That's half your problem. When you're making queens on low numbers, you, you're playing a gambling game. Once you hit Mark, uh, May 1st, you can do a lot more mistakes and they're more forgiving. Right now, weather's your biggest killer. What is? What are your thoughts on the six where the, the queens emerged, but then within two days, the bees absconded? What is the thing? Well, there's a lot of things can cause that. A smelly box. I mean, you could have old frames in there. You could have an old box they don't like the smell of. These are brand new boxes. Yeah. Did you use glue in them? Did I use what? Glue. Glue. Yes, I did. Well, sometimes glue runs them out. I mean, okay. you know, it's not cattle. You can't put them in. Bees got their own mind. Okay. I mean, that's. 
you you've got you're going to do make in Queens or do commercial. You don't big build big hives. You play numbers. Yeah. You're working with the numbers. So instead of taking one great big strong hive and just making a half a split out of it, you take that same hive and make 30 or 40 splits. Then if you lose half, you're still 15 ahead. Right. See, that's why I keep preaching. Use the least amount of bees to make the resource. Once you've got a queen in the box and she's laying, add more resources to build numbers. Okay. Appreciate it. That help? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. All right. Hey, over to Adrian. Go ahead, Adrian. How you doing? Hey. How you doing? I'm pretty good. How about you? Pretty good. The queens are doing well that I bought from you the other day. Good, good. But I had exactly the same problem that Clay had. Too many bees were bugging out. So, but yeah. she's laying. So, from what you said, I think they're, she'll do well. Yeah. Well, if she's still in the box, she's laying. Add a frame of hatching bees from another hive. And yeah, and I know we're going to that. Yeah, you know, I looked at them today. So, yep. Good. Um, the question I had was, um, you know, I'm not at your level in any way. I'm not grafting, and so how do I? Um, can you run through how how to create how I can create queen cells the right way um, for me to then cut out and then put it into boxes like clay's doing? Well, the thing you want to do is have wood and wax. If you're getting to plastic foundation, then it presents another problem. You've got to put pushing cells to protect them. So, yeah. on all the videos and all the time I've been running my mouth since the early '90s. I keep preaching, there's, bees are simple. They only do two things. They multiply, they store honey. Now, yep. you just said you want to make queen cells, right? Yeah. Run, run them in singles and feed them. Okay. When they get crowded or no place to lay, they make queen cells. Yeah. Natural okay. made queen cells are much better than grafted ones. So better, they know more than what I do. I'm just trying to play, you know, I'm playing numbers. I'm trying to take something the bees should be doing themselves and trying to make mass numbers with them. Okay, so so overcrowd them, and then they should yeah. start creating the queen cells, and then from there I'll, I'll cut them out. There's two things usually. As re, there's two things that cause bees to make cells. They're overcrowded and they're honey bound. Now right. there's other things that can play into it. You could get a field mouse in there, or you could get a decaying mouse in there. It will run bees out. Yeah. Sometimes they won't make cells. Yeah. So I've, I've had the the honey bound. Yeah. I think uh, you said to check my hives when I saw you. Yeah. And and I have been checking them. And dude, one of those eight frames just went ahead and honey bound it and the queen bugged out. <laughs> and I had seven. So I had, I'm learning from that. I cut them too close from uh, yeah. your answer to clay. And I, and I didn't uh, look after them well enough to, to then take those seven cells and turn them into nooks. But yeah. It's, learn. it's the learning process. We we yeah. all have to make a mistake to you know to learn more. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Okay, over to Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Good evening, Don. Good evening. Uh, I was in the freezer the other day and I ran across a couple pollen frames, so I got a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. These are from last season. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm running into a pollen dearth. Uh, later on this summer, is there a problem putting old pollen in there? I mean, it's been frozen. What are you trying to to accomplish? Are you trying to maintain a hive? Are you trying to build nukes? You trying to what? What are you trying to do? Oh well, I'm not doing. I'm just. Ha I just had a quick question on. Um, you know, can I actually use that? Is it uh, usable? Pollen? Yeah, or it's usable. You know, I, I get the same question here. Why aren't I feeding pollen patty? And I asked the student to look at the entrance. Tell me what you see. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's pollen coming in. If there's pollen coming in, well, what do you want to put pollen patties in there for? Yeah. But that's why I ask, what are you trying to accomplish? If it's, you said a uh, pollen dirt. So if it's a pollen dirt and you're trying to put pollen in there, that tells me you're trying to be a pollinator and you're building numbers. Well, that and just to make sure everything's fed. And then the other thing is, is to use those frames, get them emptied you, out. You say you're trying to make sure that they're fed. 
while I, you know, supplying uh, bee bread and stuff to the. You know, if you lift the back of the hive up and it is heavy, they're being fed. Right? No, I understand. I understand, but you know, obviously, the other component to feeding the babies is the pollen factor. So, I was just wondering if that pollen would ever be useful. Well, it's usable. It it all depends on what you. I personally don't run pollen patties. I mean, I will do them occasionally in January to try yeah. to get the queen to go. And if I buy a pollen patty commercially, I cut it in eight pieces. I want them to consume it overnight. That's why students come here. I got bees under trees. I got bees in the open. I got bees wherever I can set them. And they're counting one and two beetles. If you put a pollen patty in there or a firm pollen, you're going to have beetles. Because okay. beetle, the, the pollen in there is like yeast. They can smell it a long ways off. It attracts them. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have a huge pollen or a, a high beetle problem, but you know, any little bit of pollen will attract them. So yeah, well, I personally don't use it. You know, it's just it's like feed. People all the time ask me, "What are your ratio?" You know, you know, and I tell them the simple answer: A man that's had beef broth in the morning and his buddies had steak and eggs. Who's working longer? <laughs> so yeah. if you feed the bees, they're going to spend less time pulling water out to use what they can use. Especially if you put a package in there or if you put a nuke in there and you want to build it. Yeah. Feed them. They have to eat. Okay. All right. That helps? All right. That's it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Greg, if you're still on, we had a question for you. Somebody wants to know how are you delivering B delivering B uh, the, um, the social distancing, social distancing going, on. going on. Can you hear? Are you there? Yep. 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 Okay. Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. It's been uh, real tricky to try to get something like this set up, not knowing. Uh, all these things that were supposed to happen or not happen and all the state laws and such. Uh, what we did is we just uh, obviously researched uh, all the regulations uh, you know, in the states. What we're doing personally is, is maintaining six feet. Um, I'm, I'm wearing a mask, I'm wearing gloves, uh, maybe about, I don't know, 15 to 20 percent of, uh, of the folks picking up packages. We're doing about the same. Everyone else, we would just kind of set the package off. Uh, shake them down, show them the queen, let them pick it up, you know, keep everybody uh, at least six feet apart. So um, I'm not sure if the question was more of, you know, what we do while we're handling packages and delivering them or what is kind of going on across the country. What, what I can say 100% for a fact, um, everything is very relaxed on the road. Uh, there's, there's no, there's no checkpoints. There's no, uh, you know, vehicle searches, ask me what you're doing, do you have essential paperwork? Obviously, we are essential, we're in agriculture, we're delivering livestock, uh, things of that nature, but uh, that was a big question, not really knowing what we're gonna see uh, on the road once we got there, but everything's been clear, uh, everything's been relaxed, there's not been a lot of people out and about anyways, it's been real, uh, it's actually, that aspect's been kinda nice, traffic has been light, uh, it's been easy to get in and fuel, uh, but uh, well, again, what we're doing is wearing masks, uh, wearing rubber gloves, sanitizing, Clorox wipes, you know, just the basic sanitation stuff, washing our hands, those kind of things, just doing our part to keep you know, us and everybody else safe. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. You know, you know, great there is, great there is, as he, as he, and other people, we give you a clearance letter. So if you're going through a state that is shut down, you have a travel letter with permits. So my daughter, she makes sure that you have all the proper paperwork because technically some states that are totally shut down can pull you over. But as being agriculture with clearance letters, that's all you have to show them to let you right through. Okay, and I think Steve wanted to add something to that. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Greg, um, when I came back from uh, Georgia the other day, I didn't have any issues. Um, the only place I had to stop was at the border of Texas, and they asked me if I was 
working. I showed him that piece of paper that I got from Steven and he, he waved me on through. Um, the, over this weekend, I've, I've got out about nine different nukes, um, about six different people. Everybody's, you know, keeping their distance and making sure everything is all good and bees keep selling. Okay. Thank you. I want to add too that the Steve, he brought his son there, 12, 13 years old, first shot at it. He's getting a good 80% take from Grafton. So either he's awful lucky or we got a good teacher down there. So <laughs> maybe a little of both. So he's got a much better understanding of what he's doing now. Not that Steve can't teach him. I think uh, a child will listen to somebody else a little better than they do their own parents. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's very proud of himself. And he should be. <laughs> Once he starts seeing that money, he's really going to be happy. <laughs> oh, I, I had to pay him the other day to help me work on the bees. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's doing the, cre the queen raising right, he can make a lot of money. Yeah, I figure uh, it's well worth it. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, let's see. We don't have any other questions, so get those hands up, people. Can't answer those questions unless you ask them. Everyone's shy tonight. Yeah. Most people, they're afraid to say something in the chat. They don't want to feel like everybody will think I'm stupid. If you don't ask a question, you're not going to get no help. The biggest thing people keep saying, well, I'm going to start making money next year. Next year is not going to come. You either have to decide what you're going to do, do it, and expect you're going to fail or succeed. Don't worry day by day. Uh, there's a lot of people put uh, misinformation out there. And the, the biggest thing I hate to see is people that give stupid answers to things. Well, if you want to make a million, spend four or five million. I have students that will tell you, and I won't put words in their mouth. First time out, they're making money. Now, it might take a little time to get your name out there. That's why a lot of them become students and get on my page. I send them business. If I get someone in your area, I'll send you business. So if you want to be self-employed, be your own boss, have a little drive, there's nothing holding you back. And you don't have to buy everything. You can make everything out of scrap materials. I'm the cheapest guy around. I'll tell you how to be cheaper than anybody else. All right. We got more questions lined up now. Yeah, see? So over to Brett. Go ahead, Brett. Hey, everybody. Hey, Don. Hey. I made it home. You made it home. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't see one police officer the whole ride back. Mm -hmm. Didn't get stopped, you know, at any borders or anything. And I'm from New Jersey. They don't like us. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brett worked high his first day down here. And he's kept telling me I'm not learning enough. They got give me more information. There's beetles in those hives. <laughs> oh, like I learned a lot. In my bee yard. He had his uh, big old mask on, looked like a bandana. I thought he was going to hold me up. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you and everybody that was there. Did my help you good? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had a little too many bees in the back. Little loose bees coming around, playing with my face. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you again. Brett come down, took the classes, and he had part of his bees sold. And why he was here, he was selling them faster than we could even get them for him. That's so, right. You can't sell bees. They were gone. That's How many it. packages did you come back with, Brett? Twenty-five. How many did you keep? I have one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have 10, but that didn't happen. <laughs> well, it'll pay for your next trip then. That's right. Nice. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Okay, over to, let's see, who we got? Thomas. Go ahead, Thomas. Hey, Don. Hey, first off, I want to thank you for everything you do. Uh, I've been beekeeping a few years, and I think just about everything I know I've learned from watching all your videos. So uh, I really appreciate it. Well, um, I've got, so I've gotten into selling newts this year. Um, 
The question I have is kind of two part. Uh, so if I have a newt that's just busting at the seams on Monday ready to be sold, but I don't have a client coming until the weekend, what do you recommend I do to keep that newt from going into swarm mode? Just remove a frame and uh, replace it with a sheet of foundation or? Um... Well, if you got a good newt and you got two and a half to three frames of sealed brood or two good frames and two frames that, you know, a, a brood that's half to three quarter with honey, it's good. But if it's busting from wall to wall sealed brood, the thing you need to do is put a super on it with mediums and preferably put one in the middle of that medium super that's drawn out, that's gonna let them transfer some honey up in there. That's gonna give you your start or your seed for your next selling. And what I do is I have the students or when I'm selling here, I ha it's a student or a customer buying five nukes, I have extra. And I tell them ahead of time, I'm gonna show you the queen, I'm gonna point out the brood, I'm gonna explain everything. And for any reason, you don't like the color, the brood, the color of the frames, anything, I will get you another box. But when you're happy and you hit the road, it's not Walmart. You're not bringing them back. Because when they leave your house, there's a certain thing when they hit the road, it kicks in. You know what that is? It's called tinkeritis. They put their gloves on, their helmet, and they can't see what they're doing. They get in there just pulling stuff apart. They got to find the queen. Okay. I have the same thing with students. They have to find the queen. And I ask it, where's your queen cage? You don't need to find the queen unless you're caging her. So show them the product, you know, and, and don't sell it cheap. Get the price that you want. And if they come and say, well, I can get down the road a little cheaper, what's holding you back? You should be there. You know, okay. it's not being smart. If you have a product, be proud of your product. Right. Okay? Uh, the second yeah, and the second part of that question would be, um, so if, I, if I've got a newt that it's ready mm -hmm. to be sold, but I notice, you know, they're they're packed full, but I've got, you yep. know, three frames of brood, I've got honey on the side, on the outsides, I've got some pollen, uh, but they've started capping drone comb. Is that newt okay to sell, or is the customer at risk of that newt swarming? No, you, at the point that you have to, when you see, you, once you're a beekeeper for a while, you're gonna understand the process. When they start making drones, they're getting ready to swarm. So right. if I check my boxes, if I have 50 going out on the weekend, I'm here a day ahead of time. If they're too full, I'm gonna pull a frame out and I'm gonna equalize it. Make sure you got a good product there with enough frames because what's gonna happen, and I learned it many years ago, if you let it get too strong and you've got too many boxes you can't manage, you pull it up and you start some queen cups. Right away, the customer throws their hands up. That hive's gonna swarm. But on the other hand, if it's a well-developed cell and the guy is experienced, he says, I'll take it. Cause he's gonna go home and take it and make a split out of it. But the average person sees those cells, they, it scares them. So make sure it looks good to you before you present it. Okay. All right. Well, that and helps. Thanks, Don. Like I keep telling other people, one o'clock to five. If they say I want to come in the morning or I want to come in the evening, get them all. Say these are my hours. I have other things to do. These are convenient for you. If it's not, right. then you buy them somewhere else. And don't let people drill you down. Stick. To oh no. Time. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. I've I've taken your advice on the on the time frame of selling, and you know I, I had a frame of. Uh, honey, maybe even a, uh, some brood, and then I give them a queen seal, and those returning foragers are coming right back yep. to that box mm -hmm. to build mm -hmm. up. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great, great tip. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Okay, over to Patricia. Go ahead, Pat. Oh, hey. Well, I was just going to say, and as I say it often, but uh, I, I cannot see eggs early enough. And so Don has a video where he cuts a strip of eggs and takes his thumb and mashes the wax onto the frame. I took my frames and so I've got the top bar. I put two bars in the middle on a deep, just one on a medium. So I can get two or three rows of those and I can get 12 to 15 queens off of that. It's real simple. You don't have to be able to see eggs that well. And 
it works really well, especially if you haven't made queens before and you're a little timid about how it all works. That's a really easy way to do it and learn how to time them out. Um, so you might want to consider watching Don's video on that. It works really, really well. There's no money spent on, on queen stuff. The reason yes. I done that, I do a lot of videos because people prompt me. I mean, I done a stupid video way back from a guy from Maryland. He says, show us how to light it, a smoker. And I, I threw my hands on it. Says, Everybody knows how to light a smoker. It's one of the most popular videos. Now, the video that <laughs> he's talking about cutting cells, I had two older fellas come watch me graph. And they said, well, that's fine because you can see. I said, I'm 30 years older than you are. I, said, I don't see what your excuse is. I said, I've got floaters, cataracts, and all this stuff. And how many queens do you want? Well, we'd like at least a dozen or so. And I took a frame down there with a box cutter, and I just drew two lines, two, two or three cells wide. And I put a bar down there and just put my thumbs down and pushed into the bar. He said, that's too simple. It ain't going to work. He come back two weeks later. He says, why hasn't someone showed me that? It yep. worked. Five it days, you have queen half. cells. Yep, 16 days you have queens. Yep. It works. Yep, I it's that it simple. Up, simple, easy, don't have to spend no money, and it works. It works, yep. And now you do have to be in the area where eggs should be. Yep. You can't just go off some odd spot and start cutting out wax. You need to be on the frame where eggs should be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if you see little larvae, then there should be eggs in that area too. But it's real simple, and it's a good way to get your feet wet with making queens without um, too much risk. And it works. I brought up a, a, uh, a question I get all the time. She just said, I can't see eggs. Well, if you want to make queens and you don't, you don't know what you're looking at, or you're looking to see if your queen's laying, the best trick I can tell you is put your back facing the sun. Put your hand on the, the uh, frame in the middle. The bees will move away. You don't need to look for eggs. Just look for white milk. You see that? You got four day old larvae in there, close it up and move on. Yep. There's no point to look for the queen. You get in there and you root around just because you got to look at her. She hasn't changed since the last time. She's not a, a, you know, a movie star. Yep. Flashlight works too. She's yeah. a flashlight in the cells. Mm -hmm. yep. Simple trip that don't cost you nothing. Okay, over to Deanna. Go ahead, Deanna. Go um, ahead, Deanna. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. We hear you. We you hear you. Go ahead. You keep muting yourself. Uh oh. Hang on. Sorry. There uh, you go. How about now? You're good. Anyway, um, okay. I have a question. I have a. I have thirteen hives, uh -huh. and one of my hives is very feisty. So what am I going to do with that hive? Do I, I mean, I've heard you say before, split it. Well, um, uh, but where do you live? I'm afraid it's not, where do I live? Yep. I live east of Dallas. Why don't you just requeen it? The, the, the temperament would change basically overnight. That's true. Well, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I have a fellow from but Dallas. You're too, you're too just, far from me. <laughs> Uh, we have queen. two or three students that, well, we've got probably six students in, in Texas there. So now there's no excuse. Okay. We could go to Houston. There's two in Houston, up in uh, up north of Cleveland, up by Dallas. There's one or, or Amarillo. I've got several. We got, got, a, we got to be, we got a queen from y'all last year and she's still lame. Yeah. Well, then she's good for four she's or five good. years. Okay. There's a fellow in Brownsville that, does cutouts and he has 99 percent of africanized bees he wears two bee suits and he swears he buys our queens kills the queen that's in the cutout and puts our queen in there and he said he can work them with one bee suit in two weeks in three to four weeks he works in the t-shirt so 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 requeen her and we requeen the hive just catch yep. the queen that's in there yep that's what i do okay how old's the queen? Uh, she'll be almost a year in where'd, June. Where'd you get the queen from? Uh, 
from the original box that I got that I bought from a friend. Well, you could have some Africanized genetics in it, see? Sometimes free bites you in the butt. So you gotta watch what you get free. And well, then, no, we paid for we paid for the queen. Well we paid for. Well that's why And it was a good hive. It's just I think it maybe it got overpopulated or something. That's not gonna change the meanness of it. Okay. And that shouldn't. The only okay. time you have a strong hive and it's gonna change meanness in certain areas you have lizards or you have geckos. Or sometimes even a skunk will get on the hive, and it puts the bees on high alert. Okay. The first thing I would. It's do the only box out of. It's the only 18. box out of thirteen that's hot. Yeah, I would change the queen. That's the the, the easiest thing. If you're not sure it's okay. the queen and you've got lots of population to it, pull two frames out with the queen, put her in a nuke, buy a new queen, put it in that hive, and see if it doesn't change. That way, if you have well, that's, and it's overpopulated, that could be the thing, too. Okay. All right. Well, thank now, you. Another thing you might think I'll... about, are you wearing canvas gloves or goat skin gloves? Yes. Okay. The same thing happened at my yard. Uh, a bee instructor come there wearing these big old gloves, and they were stinging them like crazy. I put my, in fact, there's a picture on one of my videos I done with my face sitting on a hive that was boiling over. They didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. I said, let me see your glove. And I dragged it across the top of that hive. They tore that glove up. Change your gloves. Go to some nitrile gloves or some dishwashing gloves if you feel you need more comfort and see if that don't change okay. the stinging. Now, that's the only box I usually wear gloves with because they are, the temperament is pretty hot. The others, I'm, I'm okay with. It's from one to the other. That's what's happening. Okay. I would try washing your gloves too, Deanna, because you've probably got alarm pheromone on them at this point. I haven't yet, but I will probably do that before I go back out there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good point. Thank you. If that don't work, get a hold of my web guy. He'll sell you some good suits. <laughs> He's got some now that have little fans in air conditioning in them. I have a really good suit now, but um, I'm trying not to lose any more bees by getting stung. But I've already been stung hat, way too many times. When you're working those bees, they'll see that smile and the bees will mellow out. <laughs> Yeah, they don't like dark hair. I will tell you that. And when I go without my hat, they come after my hair quickly. Uh, well, it's hard when you're a woman and you got long hair. The only thing I tell my students is put it up in a tight ponytail and wear a baseball hat. That seems to help some. It does. It does help. Yeah. yeah. I got stung uh, last, last Tuesday on the lip and... Um, I couldn't afford the lip injections if I was to get them. Yes. That's how big my lip got. Yes. Just one B. People pay for that stuff. <laughs> yeah, they do, but that was not very pretty. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Okay. Okay, over to Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Hey, Don, I had a question about... Uh, uh, when you put queen cells in the incubator, what should the temperature of the incubator and the humidity be? Uh, we run anywhere from 92 to 93. You know, I think, you know, on your smaller chicken incubators, you know, you probably could run 90 to 92 and it'd still be mm -hmm. really good. Uh, what, what, what about humidity? Well, I mean, basically on our, our refrigerator, we don't put no water in. But now mm -hmm. when we first started using chicken incubators, we put mm -hmm. a small little uh, tray in there, a little plastic tray. We probably okay. had maybe seven or eight tablespoons of water. Uh, the main okay. thing we worried about is uh, the temperature. Uh, the chicken incubators, if you're gonna go that route and use it portable with uh, like an inverter in your truck or your car, I no. tried to tell Steve the same thing is, put you a little glue uh, on the inside of that uh, incubator, it's all plastic in there, it's slippery. And if you put cell protectors in there, they slide from one side to the other and bang around. If you put yeah. a felt or an old piece of t-shirt and glue it in there, it's mm -hmm. got a little more friction and you don't bang your cells around as much. Okay. Yeah, I took took my hand at grafting uh, just to see if I could do it. I grafted the uh, 10 queens 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, by next Wednesday, I'm supposed to put them in the incubator. So it looked like they took because it looks like they're feeding them out. And I guess we'll find out whenever. Are they sealed? Uh, not yet. They won't be sealed until well, Wednesday. Put them in the incubator until they're completely sealed. Yeah. Now, if you're not sure, you can use your flashlight or we show them how to use it outside in the sun. We hold our finger around and hold them up at the sun. You can see the queen ear moving at 10 or 11 days. Okay. That's We call it candling. We used to do that on eggs. So if we do 1,000 cells or 500, whatever we're doing, we try to run them across the light. Of course, we're doing it on a bar now. The bars hold 15. We hold three bars at a time. The ones yeah. that don't look like they got much in, we just pull them. That way, there's less movement to haul them out. All right. Well, thank you. I'll uh, definitely set that temperature at uh, 92 degrees or 93 degrees and give it a shot. Yeah, be good. Okay. Over to Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah. Well, I'm one of those people that suits up from head to toe and wears gloves and boots, the whole thing, because I cannot tolerate getting stung. And I used to wear the goat skin gloves and they got so I couldn't wash them no more because they got so stiff and hard. So I got these little white cotton gloves on Amazon. They're uh, 12 pairs for $12. And then I got the nine mil uh, nitro gloves from Harbor Freight. And I put the cotton ones underneath of these and I can feel everything. I don't have any problem. The bees don't even recognize them as being in the box. Even though it's a dark color, they don't get on them, they don't sting, um, and I don't get stung through them. So it's another route to go. Uh, the only time I have never worn a suit, I had it in the car when I went to Don's bee yard, I trusted him and said, okay, you said they don't sting. So I walked around and Leon had on shorts and flip flops and we did not get stung. But at my house, he does not get stung in shorts and flip flops, but they like me a lot. They come and find me and I can't stand it anymore. I've been stung enough. So the gloves work really well. The front of why I was shaking bees? Yep, he sure did. <laughs> In short pants. <laughs> yep. Okay. And over to Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Patrick. Uh, here's what I use if I'm traveling. And you can probably, you can buy them on eBay. They're a test tube holder. Uh-huh. You can cut them right, and that'll hold quite a few. And mm-hmm. then for the incubator, I just took a bunch of them and stapled it to a piece of board, and I slide it in. They don't have to worry about falling over. Hmm. Works good mm-hmm. for me. Cost you a little bit of setup, but I don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. But, I, have to, I have to give that a shot. Well, I put them in my incubator the first time. They fall over this, that kid bumps it this way. Mm-hmm. They, they stay in place. Mm-hmm. So, And traveling for safety, I just put them in a little styrofoam thing. If I go down to Don's, thinking about going down here and get some sales, I'll have that in my incubator. It travels with me. It just, it keeps it gentle. Don't okay. have to worry about it. So mm. that's what I want. I wanted to show you that. Well, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Lots of good tips here. That's why you need to ask these questions. You can learn something. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no more questions, we're, I think we're at nine right now. Yep, we're at nine right now. If there's any other questions, get them in right now. Yep. Going once, going twice. Getting rid of me early at night. <laughs> Eric, are you raising your hand? <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Don, got a question for you. Sure. Uh, getting ready to get some uh, queens or uh, maybe queens from Dennis here before too long. And uh, right. once she gets the lane and stuff, I uh, was thinking about doing that uh, deal where you cut the strips on the on the comb and, and uh, put it up on the top bar. Now, beans, I pretty much have other bees around this area. Will, when she lays her eggs, the new emerging queens from them, and she goes out and uh, mates with the uh, drones around this area, are they still going to be docile or are they going to have the, the traits from them as well? If I knew that, I would be a lot better breeder. <laughs> That's why you kind of hear me talk about, I buy uh, stock from different people, uh-huh. different, uh, variety. Okay. You know, 
unless you do artificial insemination, and then you still can't be sure of what you're going to get. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just, that's the truth of it. Anybody can guarantee it. And I have not found anybody that does artificial in insemination that will guarantee that queen will not fly out and remake. Mm -hmm. so if it does, you spent a lot of money for something that's you got a mongrel now. Yep. Yep. I mean, nothing is rotten stone in beekeeping. It's flexible. Yeah. So you got to listen to 10 different people and hope you get at least nine and know what they're talking about. <clears throat> that's for sure. That help? That works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now they got their all hands up now, Don. See? Final moment. Uh-huh. Okay. Adrian, you're up. Okay, Don. Uh, I did a removal last Saturday, and I just wanted to – they're really calm bees. They're small cell. They look great. They're making two nooks. I managed to get two nooks out of them. Um, any concerns? Like, what's some things I need to watch out for? Do I go ahead and fog them with uh, – like uh, one thing, if you're going to do removals and you've got bees at your house, I don't yeah. think I would want to take a removal to where I'm making hives by myself. I would okay. run them in an out yard or some people might call it a hospital yard until yeah. you see what they got. Okay. That, that's my advice there because, you know, if you get the wrong thing brought back to your house because uh, people that's doing removals, they, they try to take the comb, tape it in, or wire it up into frames, and yeah. discontaminate it with something. Or if you've got fowl brooding it, there's a lot of things you don't know. You're, you're putting a pig in a poke and hoping it's going to turn out to be a silk purse. Yeah. Okay, so I might remove them up to another place up in Commerce. So I, I I mean, have a, that's a strictly up to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, one thing I try to keep across to people is, if you're coming to buy bees from me, a nuke or something, bring new equipment. Don't bring no dead outs. Don't bring equipment on my property that's had bees on Because I can't afford to get fowl brood and spread it through my yard. Yeah. Okay. That's one thing people don't understand. Somebody down there on Craigslist has got a, a whole bunch of stuff for sale. Uh, it's a lot of good equipment there. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's a third of what you could pay or it, it's 10% of what it's worth. But yeah. can they tell you why they have empty equipment? What it what it died from? Why they got empty equipment? Exactly. So you find somebody else's headache. If you're willing to take the chance to do something cheap, like to me, wood is too cheap. Buy you something and you know it's clean. Okay. You're farther ahead in the long run. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. And if there's no more questions, that'll do it for tonight. Um, stick around for the after chat if you'd like to talk amongst yourselves. So thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Thanks for everybody showing up. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And we'll broadcast again from sunny downtown Sutton Sherry in Crawfordville. Have a good night, Don. All right. Good night, everybody.